So far, the only type of linear programming problems that we've seen are standard maximizations. So remember that a standard max, you have an objective function being maximized, and all the constraints are less than or equal to some positive number. Well, in section 4.3, what we'll see are standard minimization problems. And so these are essentially, you can think of as the reverse. The objective function is being minimized now, and all the constraints are greater than or equal to some kind of positive constant. Well, technically the constant could be zero, so it's better to say non-negative. Just like with a standard maximization problem, we also have a non-negative condition on the variable, so that means that your x1, x2, x3, all those have to be greater than or equal to zero. The approach to these types of problems is something called the dual. Essentially what we do is we find a standard max that has the same solution as the standard min, and we can use that instead and therefore use uh, the simplex method like we did before. So the steps that you're gonna use, you're gonna actually use something called a, a matrix from the coefficients. I don't really wanna call it a coefficient matrix, but essentially it is, but it also includes the constants. It's essentially just not a tableau. We're gonna find the transpose of it, and then we're gonna use those to form our new problem. And uh, the theory behind this is quite interesting. We don't really go into it, but it's certainly worth researching and reading more about because it's interesting that such a simple procedure would work. But for us, we're focused more on the, the procedure, how to actually do this. And so for this, let's just see how to set up uh, what the dual max would look like. We're not gonna set up the tableau just yet. Just take a look at what the dual would look like. So again, your first step is to set up a matrix A. And so this is not a tableau. And what we're gonna do is we'll use the constraints and then the objective function. So it's sort of in the same order as a tableau, but we're gonna just keep the things as they are. We're not gonna move anything to other sides or anything like that. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Our first constraint would come in here as two, one, five, 20. And our next constraint would come in as four, one, one, 30. I still wanna line up the appropriate variables, right? And then for my max, I'm gonna actually, or what we're trying to maximize or minimize, which here is the objective function, I'm gonna keep those coefficients, the 40, the 12, and the 400, exactly as they are, and then use a one out here. And the next step is actually to find a transpose. So a transpose is the matrix when you uh, switch rows and columns. So one way to do this is to take each column and make it a row. And so what I'll do is write two, four, 40, one, one, 12, five, one, 400, and then 20, 30, and one. What's gonna happen is this last row here is gonna be my new objective function. And over on the right of this, these are gonna be my new constants. And so my new uh, problem will be to maximize. Notice our first problem was to minimize. And since we're using a different objective function now, I'm gonna call it W. And so W equals 20, and it's a new problem, so I gotta use different variables, Y1 plus 30Y2. And now each of these are gonna be my new constraints, but they're all gonna be less than or equal to. So this is subject to 2Y1 plus 4Y2 less than or equal to 40. That's from that very first row. Second row would be Y1 plus Y2 less than or equal to 12. And our third row would be 5Y1 plus Y2 is less than or equal to 400. And then again, you have your non-negative condition. So the idea is that, and by the way, this would be the answer. This is the dual max problem. That the solution of this, Y1, Y2, when you maximize this, you actually will end up finding the minimum of Z. However, we gotta be careful. The solution of this, if I read it like normal, will actually be the solution Y1, Y2 the, that provide a max for the W. So we want the X1, X2, X3 though, that provides a minimum for the Z. So we'll have to read the answer a little bit differently. However, the min here will be the same as the max here. So that's kind of what we were talking about before. This has the same solution in the end. And so again, we'll solve this using simplex, but we'll read the answer differently. 